I don't know how to introduce this video. I'm at a loss. I'm at as much of a loss to introduce this to you guys as I was to talk about when I heard about it in 2015. I want to be a positive force on the internet, generally speaking, but one thing I feel like I need to talk about that I don't think enough like college professors really actually talk about gimmicks in the art world. Ideas that are done in fine galleries just because they seem weird or catchy and because they're like, oh, no one would surely do this. They end up making more money than I will make in the next 20 years. <laughs> like, remember how the last idea was about selling a banana or the idea of a banana? In that scenario, someone got to eat a banana. I mean, it wasn't one of the three people who bought it. Still, go watch my video on it. So today I'm gonna talk about Lana Neustrom and her invisible art. One of my drawing professors presented us with this idea in 2015 that a woman was selling not actual paintings, but like these idea or descriptions of paintings. This is reported by Art Fido, which is as far as I know, not a satire. And the article appears to be legitimate. In Neustrom's own words, just because you can't see anything, it doesn't mean I didn't put hours of work into creating a masterpiece. Art is about imagination. And this is what my work demands of the people interacting with it. You have to imagine the painting is in front of you. These are people looking at the art. Here is a screenshot of her website. <laughs> it's ridiculous and infuriating and still kind of nice that if you read the fine print it sounds like the money would go to a good cause. Seems like the kind of thing no one would pay money for. The funny thing though about this is that that assessment is actually correct. No one paid money for this and Lana Neustrom isn't a real artist making invisible art. I don't even know if she's a real person. My apologies if your name happens to be Lana Neustrom and you're an artist. Moving on. My professors also did not know that this wasn't real. They presented it as a real thing. At no point did they talk to us about it not being a real thing. This entire scenario was actually a hoax put forward by a radio show called This Is That on Canada's CBC Radio. It's a stylized kind of NPR type thing, but it is satire. The program is hosted by comedians Pat and Kelly Oldring. The thing about this though, especially after learning about a real event in which the idea of a banana being duct taped to a wall sold three times, twice for a 120,000 and then wants for 150,000 respectively, is that it really does seem like something that could happen. Collectors of fine art and the whole art market itself is kind of a weird and kind of a honestly snooty place that seems like it often loses out on the pure joy of creation. Like it seems like a lot of these fine art collectors are kind of missing the point. Invisible art isn't new. People have experimented for ages about how much or how little they can get away with creating and still call it a creative work. This idea of creating quote unquote nothing or creating as little as possible as someone can get away with and still call it a work has been especially prominent in poetry and music. The White Stripes, for example, put together the shortest concert on record ever back in July 16th of 2007. They played one note. Originally, Guinness awarded them with a record for the shortest concert ever played before Guinness actually decided to strip the title and no longer award records for brevity. Musicians started charging for concerts and arguing that if they just walked onto stage, that was technically the shortest concert. In the words of Guinness, the nature of competing to make something the shortest by its very nature trivializes is the activity being carried out, and Guinness World Records has been forced to reject many claims of this kind. As such, we have been forced to cease listing records for the shortest song, shortest poem, and indeed the shortest concert. There are other examples of quote-unquote soundless music. Famously, John Cage wrote 4 minutes 33 seconds, in which the player at a concert walks up to a piano, sits down at it, and does nothing for 4 minutes and 33 seconds, bows, 
and leaves. This piece of music reportedly inspired Robert Ratchenberg to spend a month erasing a piece of art by Willem de Kooning. It is important to note he did actually ask Willem for permission to do this, so and he did get permission. His apparent goals were to explore the limits of the definition of art itself, and he felt that he could not do this by erasing his own work. Why he couldn't do it by erasing his own work, I'm not really clear on that, but this is what we ended up with. In 2014, Marina Amber Malmick staged an exhibition at London's Serpentine that she said would be about quote-unquote nothing. Here's the real kicker though, people weren't interested in the idea about nothing, but rather the controversy that arose when another artist, Mary Ellen Carroll, claimed that she was stealing the idea of an exhibit of nothing, which Carol had been working on since the 90s. There's more to that one and to the exploration of the idea of nothingness and minimalism, and I think that that particular instance might be a really interesting video for another day. Let me know in the comments. But I think the point remains and brings me back to the beginning. The reason why so many people were fascinated with Lana Neustrom and believed that this woman had made millions from essentially nothing, is because it sounds very much like something that would happen. And it kind of has. It's the kind of thing that makes the art world seem very far away and like it's made only for the richest of the rich to enjoy, when in reality art is all around you all the time, and a lot of artists aren't being fairly compensated for it. And it's angering because things like this and the discussion around it reduces the world of art to this kind of how pretentious can I be type creation, because all you end up talking about is how ridiculous concepts like this really are. They don't teach you how to market yourself in art school. In fact, most curriculums do not include any business courses. That doesn't change that there's a plethora of successful artists of different kinds of art working today. They just don't get as much of the spotlight. Art being accessible is something that is very much undervalued. Just last year, Rupi Kuar was named Writer of the Decade. While her poetry may seem like it takes itself too seriously, and many laughed at the idea of naming her Writer of the Decade, I agree with one person's assessment that her work is popular because it is accessible. No matter your economic status or your level of education, her poems are short, quick, they're to the point, and most people can very easily get some kind of meaning out of it. The same is true for art, it's everywhere. But gallery showings of thing, or concerts without sound, or concepts of bananas duct taped to walls selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars, these aren't the kind of art that most of us can easily access, and I feel like it creates this barrier between the average person and these galleries, and it makes people feel intimidated. Is quote unquote nothing art? I don't know. I think it depends on the individual work, the ideas behind it, because there are like illnesses and conditions and periods of your life that can feel like literal nothing, and that would be a very interesting way to express it. At the same time, I don't think everyone who goes into an art gallery should need to be thoroughly educated on modern art in order to get something out of it. And when you get into, oh, these people expect you to be educated going in, it just kind of takes the fun out of it. The question it gets at really is at what point is something art? and at what point is it not? It's the same question artists and critics and consumers have been asking since we first started creating, and I don't think the discussion stops anytime soon. I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say about this. I know it's a less funny one, but I want to know what your thoughts are. Let me know in the comment section below or on Twitter. Um, I'm on there quite a lot. If you liked this video, give it a like, give it a share, a thumbs up, and subscribe because I put out new videos every other week. And also consider supporting me on Patreon. I am trying to work up to paying my rent on Patreon. I do work a job, but is less than consistent and it would be immensely helpful. Thank you so much to all my patrons who make this possible. Um, they're probably going to be on screen right about now. It means more than, way more than you would think. Like, it's, it's unbelievable. I think that's it for now. See you next time. Bye. One of my drawing professors present, yeah. one of my drawing pres, take four. One of my drawing pres, Jesus. This filming is going really well.